What's up out there? I have a new build to show off and this is an Ice Crash Juggernaut. Now this started off as a Sunder Juggernaut and I played Sunder for a little while. I just didn't like it. It fires off in like a really narrow V shape or something like that. And it just, the AOE on it, I, I didn't like. It was very slow to attack. I just wasn't feeling it. Maybe that's a good build or a good skill for some other build but I just wasn't feeling it. So with my Tectonic Slam Juggernaut, or my Tectonic Slam Chieftain, I tried this Tidebreaker. I actually bought the div cards off the uh, currency exchange. I six linked this, I tried it out in that build and I just, it didn't quite work over there. So I ended up coming back to Juggernaut. I was, well, I was thinking about what could I do with Tidebreaker. My Juggernaut was like level 50 or something like that. So I didn't take long to get into uh, equipping this uh, tidebreaker because I'd got the juggernaut up for quite a while but I had to redo some things when I put this on and a, a little bit here and there on the passive tree this is not necessarily um, this is not necessarily anywhere remotely close to optimized or finished or anything like that basically this is a bunch of things that seem to work well for this build as it is now this is kind of like where my tectonic slam build was we are currently at level 90 and on my defenses we're doing fairly well i lost a little bit in chaos res which we'll talk about here in a second but um gearing wise we're all in armor uh so this is and this armor could definitely be better it's uh not necessarily the greatest stuff on here i've got increased frostbite effect curse effect for the implicit on this one because i'm using frostbite we've got some increased damage on here uh at global accuracy critical strike uh four percent of fizz is extra cold we've got four percent damage per endurance charge we're stacking a lot of endurance charges so that comes up quite handy um like this is nothing remarkable on here i've got kinetic impacts uh for an anoint it, this is not necessarily where it needs to be or anything. Again, I've just taken this up to level 90. I got this up to level 90 yesterday. And it's just kind of where it's at right now. I would really need to play this a lot more like I did that Tectonic Slam build to really refine this build in. And I'm actually kind of curious about putting Ice Crash on a Slayer build. I think that would be really good because you come off of Slayer, you can get a lot of increased attack speed. And I think this would really benefit from attack speed. I grabbed onto a, uh, I don't know what shrine it was, but you just it, it's the one that uh, copies your attacks. This thing was just throwing down hate left and right. I think I had movement speed and the, the mirror attacks or copy attacks, whatever those two shrines are. This thing was just throwing down attacks like crazy. So attack speed would definitely go well with this build and I'm kind of curious about trying that. And the way I've got my tree, my passive tree coming off, we come out this way anyway. Uh, so what I've got is Ice Crash, Overexertion, Melee Fizz Support, Fist of War, Pulverize, and Life Tap, all with Gain Endurance Charge on Melee Stun because that's what comes off of this mall. Now, I could probably use a different maul for this. Uh, I don't know that I need endurance charge on melee stun because of the ascendancy stuff I've got, but I just, this was a, a I think this is a really good maul. This is better than anything I've got. So I ended up putting this on here and you know, I'm, I could repurpose this somewhere else. Like if I build this on the uh, Slayer uh, ascendancy or something like that, I may move this over and do something different because I did get a maul crafted up that isn't bad. It's not as good as the other stuff that I've got, but like it's got plus one uh, level of socketed gems. I could probably move this over. I, I don't know if this mall is better than this other one. Probably not. And this is more of a fire mall. I, I don't know. But I could probably put adds different fire damage onto this thing too. That's the from the town thing. But this this is like one of the better malls that I've created. Actually, it's like the best mall that I've created. I just haven't gone through to six link it. So it's possible that if I move this mall over to a different build, I could put this here. I, I need to POB it and see if it's any different. But at any rate, uh, we've got, I think we went through all of these here. So I've got leap slam, faster attacks and life tap up here with haste. Haste, you need haste on this because this is a horrendously slow build and I need haste on here, not for the DPS, but because if I turn haste off, this just becomes a very slow attack. 
and it's so slow that when you get into a pack of monsters, it you almost can't get the attack off before the monsters have staggered you or stunned you or something. There's some form of a stagger that doesn't let you get that hit off. So I had to put haste on here so that that, and that's why I say the attack speed would be uh, pretty good off of a slayer. So that's what I've got up here. I'm running molten shell with automation. We've got arrogance and precision, which we'll cover that in the ascension part or the passive tree. I'm auto-exerting, intimidating cry, rallying cry, and seismic cry. Those all work with this skill. Now, this is a very disposable six link on the chest piece. I didn't know what to do with it, so I just threw some stuff in here. This has got cast one damage taken with more duration, feeding into frost bomb. What I like about frost bomb is when this thing goes off, cold exposure applies minus 15% cold resist. So that's like the entire point of putting this on here, along with this hypothermia support which supported skills have a chance to freeze enemies with their which are chilled uh supported skills deal more cold damage over time which i'm not sure necessarily applies but and then supported skills deal more damage with hits and ailments against chilled enemies which probably applies to frost bomb but as i cycled through this i had uh blue and green <laughs> gem sockets it, it's just that simple it's kind of arbitrary i found hypothermia and it looks like it might apply to this. Definitely not the best. Uh, I put cruelty on here and life tap. This thing does like 187 damage. It's not doing anything. And I know that's on the tool tip and not necessarily like in POB or anything, but this is a spell and I just, I don't have the ability to make spells good. Uh, I could put uh, the iron will support or whatever on here, but it's, it's not gonna make that much of a difference. Um, I really only put this on here because of the cold exposure. So cast one damage taken and frost bomb are pretty much the only things I cared about. I could probably move faster attacks and leap slam down here and do some other stuff. It's not, like I said, this is not refined in any way, shape or form. It's somewhat refined. Like I've spent some time on working on it, but it's definitely not like where it needs to be by any stretch of the imagination. So for the ascendancy, I took undeniable for uh, increased accuracy, which we'll go over that in a minute. Uh, I, I, the first thing I took was unflinching because this gives you plus one to max endurance charges and you gain one endurance charges every second if you've been hit recently. So you, your endurance charge uptime is great. 30% uh, chance to gain an endurance charge when you're hit. 25% chance that if you would gain endurance charges, you instead gain up to maximum endurance charges. So like this unflinching basically means you're just going to have endurance charges. I would probably try for, um, this gives me an idea for tectonic slam of the whatever, the one, there's the uh, transfigured version of tectonic slam where you can go into cataclysm where this thing starts burning. Uh, something about this, what's it say here? 10% more area of effect per endurance charge removed, 10% branching, uh, Fisher branching chance per endurance charge removed. This tectonic slam of cataclysm would probably be really good on a juggernaut. So I'm kind of interested in trying that at some point because unflinching just, you're just gonna constantly have uh, endurance charges. And especially if you can combine that with this thing uh, with stun and all that, like you just always have endurance charges. So that could be a potentially cool build to try. Uh, but I went with unflinching. I did have unyielding at one point, which gives you increased damage and area of effect and all this kind of stuff. But I ended up backing out of that and trying some other things. Uh, I, I've, I've had almost every one of these different nodes taken at some point. I ended up with unrelenting because this gives you 1% additional LE, LE damage reduction per endurance charges. So that's an additional seven. I've got seven endurance charges at max right now. So I get 7% additional elemental damage reduction and 7% additional fizz. I did have unbreakable at one point, which gives you armor doubled and then 15% of armor also applies to chaos damage. And this also gives you 11% chaos res. So I was actually positive on my chaos resistance with this and a lot more armor. I just wasn't feeling it. And I felt like I was taking a lot of damage. I. I ended up moving over to untiring. I'm still not quite happy with the way this build is. I still take a lot of damage and I have to heal quite a bit. I heal more, I have to use my life flask a lot more often than I would care to. 
I'm not sure why I've tried things that, like, I went over into Entrench, which gives you all this spell suppression, and I didn't like that all that much either. Like, it didn't, it's not made a ton of difference. Um, but what I have gone into is kind of your staples with Warrior's Blood, Heart of the Warrior, and Born to Fight. Uh, we're also over here into Master of the Arena, Bravery, and Art of the Gladiator. I basically came over to Art of the Gladiator for the increased attack speed and the global accuracy. I want to keep my accuracy as high as possible, which I've got 4696. That is because I've also gone over here into pre Precise Technique, which means that you have to have more accuracy than life and you know what did i have oh i have critical strike chance i need to make sure and take that out i forgot about that at one point i was using stuff uh i was trying to get critical strikes but i need to make sure and change that and you know what i think i might have no nope, those are all gain when hit um but i need to make sure and take anything for um uh critical strikes out so I feel like these are staples coming over this way. I've also picked up Eagle Eye for the accuracy. We've got Soul of Steel and Bloodless over here. We've got Bastion Breaker. This gives you increased fizz damage and a lot of extra fizz damage, really. I've got Rib Cage Crusher for the increased attack speed, which I've got that on my other, on my Tech Slam build also. Of course, you come into Goblin's Blood and Cloth and Chain. I feel like those are kind of obligatory at this point. First, we've got Disciple of the Unyielding and 3% increased damage per endurance charge for the charge mastery because that's like 21% increased damage if I have that. Uh, we've also got Vigor over here. Uh, we'll just come down this side. Juggernaut, of course, Stamina for an extra endurance charge. We've got Hardy for increased life regenerate. And I came up into this for Divine Judgment for increased elemental damage. We've got Endurance over here for another endurance charge. Devotion for life, We've and then I came up here for Holy Dominion for elemental damage, chance to freeze, that kind of thing. We've got Discipline and Training for increased life and a little bit of flat life, and then down here to Sanctity, which gives you a bunch of different things. I don't care about the Energy Shield, but it gives you increased armor, life regen, and strength and int. Now, this is the part where I was tinkering around with this build with Deep Breath and Measured Fury that I ended up pulling that back into my Tectonic Slam build. So I've got those built into here. I was already at Born to Fight, so I just came up here, and then I was already at Juggernaut, so I just came over here to Measured Fury. I've anointed on Kinetic Impacts. I should probably anoint on Admonisher, but that seems fine for this one at the time, or at this current moment. Uh, let's see, we need to come off this side. So. I found out there's also cold node, uh, cold nodes over here. You've got Fangs of Frost, which damage penetrate damage with weapons penetrates 8% cold res. You get 30% increased cold damage with attack skills and some extra increased cold damage over here. And then you've also got Winter Spirit, which gain 10% of fizz damage is extra cold. So that comes up here with some extra gain is cold and some increased cold damage. So I thought that was pretty cool. And I made sure to pick up precise techniques since I was already coming this way. I was using Resolute Technique for a little while, and then I started porting over to this. There was a point in time where my life was higher than my accuracy, so that's why I was looking into the Critical Strike stuff for a little bit of time there, and then I got my, accur my accuracy is definitely well above my life. So I've been able to put points into life. I've got 4161 life with uh, 46, basically 4700 accuracy. So what does this build look like? We're gonna run a tier 16 real fast. I haven't really been working on tier 16s because I, I run lower level maps to level with. This thing has a gargantuan AOE that like just fills the entire screen. Like it is the size of the screen and it gets bigger as you go. So let's go kill a few things, get some endurance charges built up and hopefully don't die. Uh, definitely take a lot of damage with this. Like I said, I, I have to hit the heal button far more than I sh think I should. I just don't know how to get around that yet. What's funny about this build is it will, not like every rare that it hits, but it will one shot rares. Yeah, see this is a little bit, uh, the, the damage coming in is a bit much. Let's back this down to something a little bit more reasonable. Uh, we'll do this one. It's the 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 magic or spell damage or something like that. That's why I went into spell suppression. But it's 
I, I can't tell if it's exactly projectiles or spell suppression that I need, you know, like evasion. Because that's what I always felt like I needed with my other build was more evasion than anything. Um, I don't know, the, the tech slam build. I always kind of felt that one needed a little bit more. But, like, rare monsters die in one or two hits sometimes. So this thing is like a screen clear. The only downside to it is what I like about tech slam is you send that AOE forward and it just kind of goes out and blasts everything in it in uh, ahead of you. This one, you're kind of in the middle of it. So the AOE is gargantuan, but you're, you're in the middle of the AOE when you drop it. So it's, I think it's bigger than like the, it's on, it's on track with the tectonic slam AOE size. But you, you're because you're in the middle of it, it's like smaller, if that makes sense. Um, let's see if we can kill this guy out. The cool thing is you freeze things. So I don't have to worry about stun, but I, like I freeze stuff when I hit it. So this guy doesn't really stand a chance. I can just sit here and wail on him. And <laughs> he's just kind of dying as he goes. And that's how this build plays. This thing is a monster of a build. Like the AOE size on it is massive. I also learned, uh, let's see here. I didn't want to hit that button. I also learned, let's see, where was this? Uh, let's see, can I find this node? There was a section of nodes that I picked up somewhere in here that I thought would be very cool. And it turns out they just don't apply. I don't remember where they're at. There's a, oh, these, that's right. I came up into this. So you would think that something labeled AOE would get increased area of effect by this. But I think somewhere I read, like in a Reddit thread or something, that area of effect on this does not actually apply to this or something. Like I, I picked on this because I thought I could get the AOE to fill, like literally fill the screen. So like this goes from top to bottom, but it doesn't go from side to side. I wanted to like fill the entire screen with an AOE. I, it was more of a, can I do this kind of thing? I put these points into here, but the AOE didn't grow. This would theoretically make this 10, 20, uh, 30% larger. So it should get bigger when you put the points into this, but it didn't really change anything. So I'm not sure why a tag of AOE would not get increased by something that increases area of effect. That seems kind of stupid. Or maybe if it is increasing, it just wasn't increasing it all that much. I'm not sure. I don't know, but I did try that. It didn't really seem to make anything bigger. So I don't know. I don't know how true that is, but I ended up pulling those points out because it just didn't seem to do much. Uh, I also have, let's see, Fist of War support in this. Fist of War support, if you notice, this thing's got like a red tinge to it. If I take that out and hit, that red tinge goes away and the AOE kind of gets a little bit smaller. Uh, this thing, <laughs> and again, this is, increased 58% increased area of effect. So I don't know why this would apply to it and make the AOE bigger. I'm not sure. I, I don't I don't understand. Sometimes I don't understand this game. But at any rate, I did try that AOE effect and I did try to take this thing out and put something else in. But this was so good putting this into it. it the AOE gets bigger and it's, it's it felt really good. Um, but that is my Ice Crash Juggernaut. It is currently level 90. Uh, the leveling experience has not been very bad at all. Like I have died very little. I know I take a lot of damage and I have to heal a lot and use my uh, life flasks a lot. But honestly, I haven't died all that much. I don't know that that's a good thing because I am taking a lot of damage, but I was able to get the Exarch down about half life with this. I ended up finishing them off with my tech slam build just because I wanted to use that build, but I probably could have done it with this one. I just didn't, I had already burned two of the portals off. And I thought, you know what, I'll just try it with my tech slam build just to see how it goes. But I got him down to half life with this. I think the biggest problem is how slow he attacks. What you can do is if you're getting chased by some big thick rare monster, is you can slam this down and this thing will, what it basically does if you've never used this is it repeats. So you've got 
three slams that come out of it and they do less damage each time but they get bigger so there's one hit then there's two and then there's three so it just gets bigger as it goes so if you're getting chased by a monster uh maybe a, a thick rare monster or a uh uh oh a uh, an essence monster or even like the to a point the x arc the problem i had with the x arc is he would kind of just park and sit he wouldn't kind of chase me around so that's where the tech slam build came in because i could just throw an aoe off over to him with this build i had to get within this range of him with tech slam i could throw that aoe all the way off to the side of the screen so that's what made the fight so much better with tectonic slam compared to this one now if he would have been chasing me or any other big monster chasing me i could have just done this as i go and he would have been getting hit the whole time so i don't know but i do want to try this out on slayer i think this might be a really good slayer build especially if i could get the attack speed up quite a bit and just go to town with this thing <laughs> because when i had this uh was it i think it was this build and i'm kind of remember not remembering now but i think it was this build that i had those two shrines on and it just attacked like crazy it was great i don't think it was my tectonic slam build but uh, more attack speed means a lot more attacks and it's kind of funny because you can start laying down hate just fast but at any rate that is my tectonic slam juggernaut i've had a lot of fun playing this i would love to get this as a faster attack it might make sunder better if it attacked faster but i think this is a really cool skill i was looking at a uh, uh, poe ninja on this one not a whole lot of people are using ice crash and i think this is a really slept on skill because this is very cool it, at level 90, it is not necessarily on par with my Tectonic Slam build, but it's very close. Like, it's got 500,000 DPS or something like that, where the Tectonic Slam's at 600,000. So, it does a lot of DPS. It will one-shot a rare. Not every rare. I mean, there are definitely rares that it won't one-shot, but it, it one-shots rares and one or two shots rares. I've never had a build that just could instantly delete a rare, ever. I don't think I've ever had one. This one has, and I think that's amazing. And this probably has a lot of promise with like, uh, I keep coming back to the Slayer build, but it's probably got a lot of promise on that Slayer build. So anyway, that is my Ice Crash Juggernaut, and that will do it for this video. We will catch you on the next one. Take care.